Fraser Centerpoint Trust, the only retail REITs that have all their properties in Singapore, have a very impressive track record since their IPOs before the global financial crisis. Are they able to continue to maintain that performance? Let's take a look on that. Currently, the REITs have nine suburban malls. They are mainly located in the northeast and the northeast part of Singapore. Which one that's located in the central of Singapore, which is the Baru Plaza, coupled with an office property called the Central Plaza. These are the nine suburban retail property they have, plus one office building. The portfolio is pretty well diversified. We don't have a single property that have a net letable area of more than 20%. The biggest one comes with Causeway Point, followed by Waterway Point and Tampines. As because all the properties are in a suburban area, so more than 50% of the trades in the mall are mainly essential services, which include like FMB, Hypermark Supermarket, Beauty and Health, and dental and medical services. From this table, we can see that on the suburban retail play, Fraser Centre Point have the equal weightage with CICT, which have about 9.6% of the share of the retail floor space in Singapore. And for the past five years, they have a pretty good performance, except during the COVID period where we expect their revenue have dropped, their net property income have dropped, their DPU have also cut. But Two years after the COVID, you can see that their revenue actually have drastically improved by easy more than three times and their profit have increased by more than two times and their DPU have also have recovered. In touch, we can see that this risk actually have started to recover out from the COVID. One thing when we look at the risk, we actually look at the rental reversions. As we now know that some of the risks are still experiencing negative rental reversion, especially in the office and the retail side. But we look at Fraser Standpoint, actually the rental reversion is a positive of 4.2% as a whole. And from here, we can look at the Fraser Standpoint retail portfolio. The rental reversion for incoming versus out- outgoing is positive 1.5. And the average versus the average rental reversion is 4.2%. This shows that the leasing demand has been start to normalize when Singapore start to reopen up again after the COVID. One thing I'm not so comfortable initially with Fraser Center Point is the lease that's going to expire for FY2023 was supposed to be 27%, but over just within three months, they have managed to reduce it to 20%. This shows that they are actually working very hard, but this is something that we need to monitor on that because you can see that for FY2024, that this expiry profile have more than 30% that were going to expire where this is where we want to see that are they able to continue to have a positive rental reversion when FY2024 come? And the top 10 tenant which only contribute 20% of the gross net debtable area and for the gross revenue is contribute less than 20%, which means that they have a very good tenant mix and which is very well diversified. And the number one tenant is NTUC Fair Price, which contribute about 6.1% on the net debtable area and 4.1% of the GRI. And we know that NTUC fair price will be pretty stable and thus we don't really have a big concern on that unless NTUC fair price de- decide to vacate from the shopping mall to go to other place, which I think the possibility may not be high due to the shopping mall are mainly in the suburban area which actually serve the population of Singapore. And the top category will be FMB which contribute more than one third on the NLA and the GRI. And this is pretty normal as shopping mall have need to transform from the old time where people go shopping mall to go to departmental store to buy clothing or this. Now shopping mall has started to transform and become a place for people to gather, for people to mingle and for people to eat. And thus F&B will definitely have a big concentration on the shopping mall. But one thing that we also need to have a balance, one third on f and to me it is pretty reasonable and well balanced. It's not really too high or too low. Let's look at their financial status. Their NAV have increased by 1.3% year-on-year basis from $2.30 to $2.33. 
And let's look at their capital management. The gearing is 33.9%, which is considered pretty healthy. But one thing, two things on the ICR, where the interest cover ratio actually have start to drop, although it's still way above the MS requirement, but this is something we need to take note that it has start to drop and the average cost of debt has start to increase. This is indirect, you can see the impact of rising interest rate affecting the risk and their percentage of fixed rate have increased to 73%. To me, it's a pretty good figures. The next thing we want to look at is for FY2023, they actually have 21% of the debt that need to refinance. And definitely, we expect them to refinance at a higher interest cost. And thus, we may see that this ICR may drop further and the average cost of debt may further increase going forward in the next few quarters. And this is something that we need to think note on that. And for FY2023, they got another 25.3% of debt that need to refinance. But by that point of time, I think the interest rate peaks will be very over and maybe interest rate will start to stabilize and may start to come down for later part of their FY2024. This is the track record of Fraser Centerpoint on their DPU, especially when we come to risk. One of the key focus we want to look at their DPU, are they growing or not? So Fraser Centerpoint have a very impressive track record of DPU growth. You can see that despite the growth financial crisis at 0809, the DPU still slowly increased. And actually, the NAV didn't really drop during the growth financial crisis. And their NAV have been steadily increased. Even despite the COVID period, the NAV have also have increased. Except that they have suffered quite a fair bit during the COVID where their DPU have dropped. To me, it's not really their fault because we know during the COVID period, the shopping mall is just like a ghost town and they need to give a rental rebate to the tenant. So a drop in DPU is expected. But... What I'd like to see is after the COVID, you can see that their DPU have actually increased and it have continued to further increase. So this is one thing very positive about Fraser Center Point. So let's look at their performance from the chart perspective. For one year return, we can see actually Fraser Center Point actually have suffered a marginal loss of less than 2%. As we know that there's a big sell down on the risk in Q4 last year compared to STI, which is positive, but However, they have outperformed the risk index. We have dropped 4.75%. But let's look at total return perspective, where we include the dividend side. And Fraser Center Point actually had delivered a positive return for the past 12 months compared to the risk index, which is actually flat. From this chart on a total return perspective, you can see that actually they have recovered from the Q4 sell down. They are coming back to the price before the Q4 sell down. Let's look at the longer term for five years return. Definitely, these streets have outperformed the STI over the five year period. And you have also outperformed the risk index by a small percentage point where it delivered 22% total return. And this is the performance of this week since IPO. We have delivered 432% returns, which is definitely better than the STI performance. So now let's look at the future prospect of Fraser Center Point. Are they able to continue to grow and deliver such a return going forward? Let's look at their full year DPU for their financial year 2022. You can see that they have a DPU of 12.227 cents. You can see that for the first half 2021 to first half 2022, actually it's a 2.7% increase. And when you compare the second half 2021 and second half 2022, we can see that actually it is also flat. And a year on year basis, full year basis, actually the DPU is increasing. So this result look pretty good. But if I were to dissect further, if I were to arrange the DPU in the order, like in the time sequence, we can see that for first half 2021, the DPU is 5.99. Six. Followed by second half, 2021, actually the DPU have increased from first half to the second half. Next, then we go back to first half, 2022. When this were to compare with this, actually it is also a DPU increase. So the DPU actually have increased over three half of the year. First half, 2021, to second half, 2021, then to first half, 2022. But that's where second half, 2022, where the DPU actually, when compared to the first half, 2022, actually is a job. So their DPU actually have start to drop in the latest second half of 2022. I think mainly because of the impact of the rising interest rate and the increasing cost on that. Were they able to maintain an increasing dividend for their first half, 2023? This is something that we will need to monitor for that. As we know that they still got another 20 over percent of the debt, they need to refinance for this financial year. And most likely have to refinance at a higher interest cost. For Fraser Center Point, they have a very impressive 
portfolio occupancy with on the based on the latest update as of 31st of December, where their occupancy is 98.4%, which is very good. And we can see some of the shopping mall have even achieved 99.9%. Or even 100% occupancy. But I just want to point our attention to two property. One is called the Century Square, where the occupancy is below 90%, which is 88.7%. We have a slight improve compared to 30 September 2022, but it's still way below 90% mark. One of the key reasons because of the cinema operator have vacated the place, and this cinema operator will able to will contribute about 8% of the occupancy. Now they are in the process of getting a new cinema operator in. So when this new cinema operator will to come in this year, the occupancy rate for Century Square will be able to cross 95%. And next is the Central Plaza. The occupancy has managed to go into 90% range already. And one of the reasons why the time is dropped is their anchor tenant have vacated the properties. So this caused a drop in their occupancy rate. But we can see that quarter by quarter, the occupancy rate for Central Plaza is improving. And also not really a key concern to me on Central Plaza because the contribution of Central Plaza is actually quite minimum to the rich portfolio as a whole. And furthermore, the main contributor like Causeway Point, Waterway Point, Tampines One, and even North Point, are keeping very, very high occupancy rate, which will definitely able to sustain the REITs for giving out a good dividends to investors. Let's look at the tenant sales and shopper traffic. For the shopper traffic, this is a pre-COVID level, and we can see that we are still more than 10% shortfall of the pre-COVID level shopper traffic. And this to me is means that there is further growth potentials for the for the risk itself as if the support traffic will be able to come back to the pre-COVID level, I will expect that revenue will further increase. And let's look at the tenancy here. And the tenancy actually surplus the pre-COVID level by more than 18%. So with the shopper traffic continue to increase and we expect the tenancy will to be able to increase. And this will be the positive thing to the risk. And how a risk will continue to enhance returns to investors is on one of the ways is to do AEI to enhance a property so that they can improve the returns. And Tampines One is going for a 38 million AEI. And this will be able to generate 8% ROI on the enhanced cost of 31 million. And it will commence on second quarter of 2023 and complete third quarter of 2024. Thus, we will not see the positive contribution from Tampines 1 in the near term. We have to wait until maybe the fourth quarter of 2024 to see the positive impact from Tampines 1. But at least we know that there is some positive impact coming in the possible futures. And Fraser Center Point also have announced recently that they have joined hand with their sponsor Fraser Property Group to acquire 50% interest on the suburban mall next for 652.5 million. This is to me, it's a very positive news as at current interest rate environment, we, it is very hard for REITs to go and buy properties and I many to acquire next. And this will indirectly secure a growth potential for these REITs in the next three to five years. It will be a joint venture between them and Fraser Property to acquire 50% take on next and Fraser Center Point will hold 51% of it. And this will give them an MPI yield in the region of a high 4%. This acquisition will be purely funded by debt or internal cash resources. So there will be no equity fundraising required to acquire this next property. And it is a DPU, a creative acquisition. From here, we can see that the DPU will be up by 0.52% after the acquisition. However, let's look at the performance of other metrics. Is First is the NAV. There will be no change in their net asset values. It's still $2.33. One thing to think of that the green will increase from 33% to 38.5%. If in future, Fraser Center Point will continue to acquire the balance 49% stake of next from his sponsor Fraser property, which is in the next few years, the gear may cross 40% or they may need to serve to certain form of equity fundraising. Unless along the year, they have divest of some of their non-core asset. So this is one thing we need to pay attention to that on Fraser Center Point. The good thing about acquiring next, Fraser Center Point will become the largest landlord for suburban retail sector. It will be definitely larger than CICT already where now they are currently on par with CICT. 
But with the next stake inside, there will be the biggest uh, suburban retail sector landlord. And this next investment has further increased their catchment area where we can see next is here. So there will be a new catchment area for Fraser Center Point. This will definitely improve the revenues, the bottom line for the REITs. With that, you have further diversified their portfolio and reduce the dependency on the big shopping mall. For example, Causeway Point net netable area will drop from 19% to 17% and Waterway Point will drop from 17% to 16%. Where next will take up 6% of the net netable area. And this 6% is only 25.5% of next as they only acquire 50% stake of next. And this 50% stake is a 51 and 49 split between Fraser Center Point and Fraser Property. So this is one of the growth potential we can see in the future where they were able to increase the next holding in future by buying from the sponsor the balance 49% stake. And also another growth potential of places and I look at it is the North Point City where we still have the soft wing still under Fraser property. And that is also a potential acquisition that Fraser Center Point can acquire in the future. And this is a foreseeable pipeline that I can see for Fraser Center Point which I think that for the next three to five years, Fraser Center Point will be able to continue to grow. But if a long-term investor is like looking for 10, 20 years, then we need to look at what is their future growth strategy of Fraser Center Point. Are they going to go overseas to acquire properties? And if they're going to go overseas to acquire property, which country are they going to? There's limited shopping mall for them to continue to acquire in Singapore in the foreseeable futures. In a nutshell, Fraser Center Point have performed very well since the IPO until today, and it managed to recover very well from the COVID. I can also see there's pipelines of properties for Fraser Center Point to acquire and for them to continue to grow in the foreseeable futures. But however, my concern will be a long-term growth is what's next after the, all these pipelines have been used up. And this is what our monitor Fraser Center Point for on what is the long-term plan for the risk manager on Fraser Center Point going forward. That's all I have to share with you today. And if you feel that this video has benefited you, do remember to like, share, and comment on the videos. Lastly, do remember to subscribe and press the notification button so that you'll be notified on my next video. I shall see you in my next video. Bye-bye.